actually here on time this week because last week we uh, started streaming, streaming to nobody. It wasn't going anywhere. We had a lot uh, of good things to say. It was yeah, it was very, uh, quite an interesting few, first few minutes. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about how to train your dog to ignore distractions. And I know that's something that a lot of people really uh, struggle with. You know, that's something that it comes up in a lot of situations mm-hmm. for uh, dog owners. Uh, and there are some tricks and tips that we're going to give you today that will help you from the ground up, uh, you know, to help you teach your puppy how to uh, pay more attention to you, how, how to teach your dog to, uh, you know, really, um, uh, you know, not get so distracted when you're out and about. And I'll... I think that we should check that we're on. Yeah, I think we are. Oh. I think so. Normally. It's hard to say. Um, normally, now, you know what I can do? I can actually go to. Type if you can hear us. I can usually go to. Hello. Uh... There's a Hello. Uh, see what's going on here. Uh, <clears throat> but one thing <coughs> I'd like to mention is that uh, this episode <coughs> coincides with our um, Raptors basketball game. Now, uh, we have a, tr- we're very close to Toronto, and there's been a lot of Canadian pride surrounding uh, the Raptors. Uh, and it has been pretty exciting. Now, uh, I know our. Thanks, guys. I know our. Yeah, see, because now we've, uh, we've, we're worried. We never know if we're, if yeah. we're live or not. Negative reinforcement. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, great to see everybody uh, helping us out. And I see... Hello, e- hello, hello. Hi, Eden, hi, hi. Eden Fraser's dropping a little... <laughs> in the chat. Good to see... Tootie, the, tootie. The toots have already started. But getting back to things for a moment. Now, we are... We're just wrapping up the pre-show, but we are in um, the basketball playoffs. If you follow basketball at all, I generally... I don't really follow basketball that much. But I do when the playoffs are going on. You know, when uh, when your team's in the championship... It's way more exciting. Yeah. Now, always got to root for your country. For sure. And somebody else that is a big fan of basketball is our moderator, Dan, the moderator man. And I've actually set up a live shot to uh, see what Dan is up to. Now, I, I'm hoping he's ready because I know he's really excited about this <laughs> game and I'd hate for uh, him to miss it. But let's just see here if we can go to Dan. So we can go live to Dan's place. Yeah. There he is. Hey, buddy. Oh, and there's Lucy Lou. Yeah, it looks like he's ready. He's ready for the big game tonight. So this is going to be pretty good. That's pretty good. good. Yeah. Wow, Dan, I'm impressed that you can do that. Yeah, I'm also very impressed that he can spin that ball uh, like that. That is something that I could never do, and it was quite embarrassing for me. So I don't think I've ever tried. Let's get right into things. Today, we're going to talk about how to train your dog to ignore distractions. We're going to talk about some stationary skills, you know, uh, during playtime. Teaching your dog to ignore distractions when you're walking on leash, and it's all coming up. I'm Ken Steep. I'm Cal McCann. And welcome back to McCann Dogs. I see lots of people who are dropping some great information in the chat, and these are train station regulars. You know, they are they are frequent passengers here on the training train. And I'd like to know for anybody who hasn't commented yet, where are you where are you joining us from? Where are you heading into the train station from? I'd love to know. More importantly, I love to play, I'm just roll thinking this it's graphic. funny that Lori Randolph says it's funny hearing Canadians say out and about. Oh yeah, I think because we have. Such we a don't say a boot, deep, don't deep they inflection. think that we say a boot? Uh yeah, well, we out sort and of about. Do. Yeah, we really like um, drop. Of course, uh, I feel the, like the, I say it normal. The inflection <laughs> on the end of uh, on the end of those words out out and about. Yeah, see, you definitely do. Just uh, a friendly reminder as well that if you are watching us from Facebook, that you won't be able to comment. We won't be able to see your comments or what you're writing. So if you want to be able to ask questions so that we can see it and then we can answer your questions, which we will be doing a lot over the live stream, for sure. make sure you get off Facebook and get on uh, the McCann Dogs YouTube page and you can um, head to the link there and then you'll be able to ask questions and we'll be able to see it. Yeah, that's an important point because we do these train stations for you guys. So if you have questions, when you have questions, drop them in the chat you know our moderator can take a look at them and and we'll also see them we have like a I have a screen set up sometimes the chat goes really fast so I've got to go back a couple of pages but we have something set up to uh, address that but let's see where people are joining us lots of Americans today yeah I see um, let's see I saw a few interesting ones from uh, Hobart Australia Michigan the United Kingdom thanks for staying up so late with us Nicola nice Um, I know it's it's maybe Australia midnight um, yep, uh, Florida, Another Illinois, Australia. Massachusetts, New York, Hamilton, um, United Kingdom, nice. Georgia, uh, New York, New uh, Brunswick. Yeah, very cool. 
So yeah. we're pretty pumped that you guys are here to uh, join in this. Again, as Kale mentioned, if you are watching from the Facebook link, make sure you head all the way over to YouTube because then you'll be able to join us here in the chat. I see Shandy Blake has uh, jumped in the chat as well. Good to see you, Shandy. Hi, Shandy. <laughs> frequent train station visitor. I also saw SD Cruiser, who is our uh, also one of our moderators. So thanks for joining nice. us again, SD Cruiser. Now, we're going to talk to you about a few steps. And, and all of these um, train stations sort of come from questions that our students might ask, whether they're online or in class, or they're conversations that we have, uh, you know, uh, when we're having dog trainer chats in our in our lunchroom. So today, uh, we were I was talking to a student not that long ago about um, you know, her challenges with walking her dog on leash and the, what she found was successful was placing her dog in a sit yeah. uh, and then rewarding him for that. Yeah. And I think, uh, there's some value to doing that, There is. but, um, what you're going to see. You don't get very far that way. Right. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. What you're going to see if you, if you to, to, uh, to, to correct or, or redirect a walking on leash issue, if you place your dog in a sit and then reward them for sitting nicely is you're going to have a really great sit. <laughs> that sit is going to be brilliant because you've reinforced it so much, but um, that you don't want that to be your default behavior. Yeah. It's like, that's one thing you can do, but that there's also other alternatives. So it's not bad if you're doing that. We're just hopefully going to give you a yeah. bit more, more to do. More for tools. sure. For sure. And we're going to talk about the critical points when it comes to teaching your dog to ignore distractions mm -hmm. because there's a time before, during, and after that you really need to be uh, aware of. And uh, by the end of this live stream, you know, you'll have a little deeper idea of how you can help your dog through some of these really challenging distractions. So uh, we're excited to get started. So um, I think we're ready to go, are we? Yeah. The person who just said uh, Longview, Texas, just found McCann Dog Training uh, YouTube channel. Absolutely love it. Thank oh, you, cool. by the way. Yeah. Uh, take the do uh, the long way home. You're not referencing the, the like a really good Dixie Chick song, are you? Let uh, me know if or, you are. Or if their last name is DeLong. That's also oh, very, that would be very really witty, cool. and that's a great uh, yeah. YouTube name. <laughs> So let's talk about some important skills that you can focus on that have nothing to do with, um, you know, actually uh, teaching your dog to ignore distractions, but they're skills that will help your dog to ignore distractions. And I know like the four that like jump into my mind, response to name, mm -hmm. some stationary control exercises, mm -hmm. some attention exercises. You know, we work on something like the look at me. Maybe mm -hmm. we can show you guys uh, a little bit of work on the look at me. Voluntary and involuntary attention. Abs yeah, absolutely. Um, and also some trick training, which mm -hmm. at first you think like, well, I don't, that doesn't make a lot of sense. How am I going to teach my dog to ignore distractions mm -hmm. by teaching them some tricks? But you're going to be surprised uh, at the value of doing something like that uh, with your dog. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the response to name and, and the benefit of the exercise. Yeah, well, first of all, when we say response to name, um, our expectation with McCann Method is that when we call our dog's name, we expect them to check in with us. They don't necessarily have to come to us when they hear their name. They just basically need to check in and be like, hey, what's up? What do you need me to do? Um, and our criteria is pretty specific, and that is that if we say their name one time, we want the dog to check in with us on that very first try. Well, we don't want to have to say their name over and over and over again or start to get louder or maybe a little edgier with our voice in order to get them to turn. We yeah. want to be able to very, you know, nicely say like spot and have them turn around and say, hey, what's up? And then we can tell them from there. So that's the, that's the expectation that we want. And we yeah. do want the dog to be able to to meet that criteria regardless of where they happen to be. So whether they're in the kitchen when you happen to be slicing up food <laughs> to like, you know, walking past the dog park or taking your kids to school and there's a little bit more going on. We do want them to respond to their name in those circumstances as well, which of course is a lot more challenging. So we have um, some methods that we use in order to teach the dog to be that reliable. Yeah. And something that I just thought about is when you're teaching your young dog or your dog in training their name, you've got to be really careful that you're not overusing it. Mm -hmm. The most common thing that I see is that, uh, is that people will uh, spot, spot, spot for everything. And let's imagine that their dog's name is spot. Um, but they'll just be using the dog's name over and over again. Um, and they never follow up. If the dog doesn't listen, they'll just call it again, or they will, uh, not, not, you know, um, acknowledge the great effort that the dog put in mm -hmm. and that's a really fast way to decrease the value of your dog checking in with you and when it comes to distractions your dog is going to choose whatever they think is more valuable or whatever they're more interested in so be careful that you're not um, decreasing the value of you by overusing their name during the teaching phase yeah i think
think um, it's pretty common for people to overuse their name, not even to repeat their name trying to get the dog's attention, but a lot of people will insert the name into like other areas of the life that the dog, that they want for the, from the dog. So it could be like, Spot, get your toy. Spot, get in your crate. Spot here. Spot this. Spot that. And if you're just saying it over and over and over again in all these different contexts, it can be, I don't know, it just sort of becomes easy because they right. they hear it all the time they don't really have to react and it sort of becomes just another word and we want it to be a very special word word to your dog yeah for sure and we talk about some of these exercises when you're when your dog is fine is being distracted really easily you need to uh maybe bring out the big guns so for you at home if you find that your dog is really uh challenging no matter what the skill is that mm-hmm. might be the time that you bring out the good stuff you know, you bring out the chicken wieners, you bring out the hamburger, you bring out the chicken, you know, those things, because you really want to reinforce that gr- that great behavior, capture that moment that they're making a good choice, and then reward them for it. So, you know, as we set up, as we start to get into the idea of uh, teaching your how you're going to train your dog to uh, ignore distractions, we also need to really think about not just that event and not just that distraction, but really teaching them that you are worth listening to, you're worth paying attention to. Mm-hmm. Do you know what Super Tramp is? Yeah, you don't know what Super Tramp is? No. Am I supposed to know? Oh my god. Is it a band? I, I would hope so. Is it yes. A, oh. Yes. It's a it's a classic. Rock like a band. country? Oh, okay. Oh, no. I'm I sorry. Can't believe this is the train station I'm is sorry. Never, wow. I know lots of music we're, too. We're, I'm surprised. We're going to be listening I heard somebody say Cheap Trick. Yeah, we're going to be listening to some Super Tramp after this. Yeah. So whoever's commenting about Super I Tramp, I know Cheap Trick. Don't you worry because I have a playlist set up just for Kale. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the value of working on some stationary control exercises Mm -hmm. and, and and the benefit of that. Well, um, being able to have stationary control is a great place to start because it's a lot easier to achieve that than it is to be moving around with your dog and getting attention because, uh, stationary, um, exercises. So when we say that we are referring to like holding a sit or holding it down, um, behavior for a long period of time, it takes the dog a lot of mindfulness to be able to do that. So when they can get to the point where they can be that calm, calm-minded, then um, it helps to lower their stimulation, lower their energy, and it's easier to to get their attention. So, um, you know, teaching some stationary exercises, we uh, teach a command that we call get in, and that is a very specific sitting location that we have where the dog's not allowed to sit anywhere, but they have to kind of scoot in and sit at our left-hand side nice and tight to us, and they have to remain in that sitting position until we give them a release command. So, And when they're there, they're not allowed to bark or bite or jump up on people. They just kind of have to stay nice and close to us, you know, you know, pay rather good attention, be calm-minded. Um, we can pet them. We can feed them. They just sort of learn to kind of hang out. It's like their little off-button location. And in, in our grade one classes um, for obedience training, that's one of the very first exercises exercises that we train because it sort of gives people a starting spot when the dog learns to sit and be calm there then they can do other things like teach their dog to walk or teach their dog to you know do a different position like down or whatever it might be so that's um something that we often start off with so if you can't get attention when there's not much going on and your dog is still try to focus on that first before making it a bit more more exciting then of course you know consider where you're practicing make it make it easier than harder before you before you uh, continue. Yeah, I um, I noticed the question of the day rolled by and um, Dan, our moderator, has added in the chat four question marks. So if you have uh, can answer the question of the day, and I think our uh, question of the day is, what is your dog's most difficult distraction? What's that thing that they really struggle with? I see mm-hmm. some of you guys answering it in the chat, which is really, really helpful. And we're going to address uh, each of those. I can but if say you're, what mine are too. Yeah, for sure. So when we get to that, uh, if you're answering the question of the day, just drop those four question marks in the chat. I wanted to mention really quickly about um, the stationary exercises. So let's talk about the stay or the get in or anything like that. If you're working uh, on your dog training, your dog's listening skills, you know, the work trying to, uh, you know, build that uh, attention on you. Those stationary exercises are so valuable because you have so much control. You can be so precise, you know, that you're not worried about something moving into your environment or you moving into uh, something, you know, a, a distraction. I see some people mention stuff like, you know, rabbits, squirrels, mm. other dogs. Yes. You know, those things are 
those things are, are pretty... Um, Holding a toy while running agility. Yeah, and that can be a challenge. <laughs> but those things can be really um, challenging to try, and it's hard to prepare for them. It's hard to train through some of them. So you really do need to load all the value on you. And we'll talk in just a moment about a couple of ways to do that. But using those stationary exercises to um, you know assist things like you're walking on leash do have value. There really is value there because you have so much control and you can control so much of the environment. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we do uh, the you choose exercise and just talk about, you know, uh, um, acknowledging and rewarding yeah. your dog, checking in with you. I think uh, that our train station the passengers might mm-hmm. enjoy that. I'm going to start calling you guys passengers. I think I haven't decided yet. But I see some really great. So we're going to get to some of these specific um, answers for the question of the day. Do you want to head on over to the train station and we sure. can uh, start doing that? Let's see. I've got so many questions coming in. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. Dana says anything that moves. Yeah, I can totally appreciate that. I, not, there's not, there are lots of dogs who really, um, you know, are stimulated by motion. And at the moment they see something move, they, it has their attention. But with no further ado, guess what time it is? It's time to head on over to the train station. I do love tooting. Is it light enough back here? I think so. I can make it a little bit lighter if we need to. Can you see me? Okay, we have a different setting on the microphone. How about, can you guys hear us now? We might have to jump back into that one. Do you want to go from the beginning? Yeah, if you can. I think they can hear you now. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to be doing is teaching my dog how to ignore distractions by way of, um, you know, an offering game. So I'm going to purposefully uh, encourage her to look away from me and I'm going to wait for her to choose to look away from a distraction and choose to look at me. And what's difficult about doing this is I'm not gonna ask her to do it, I'm gonna wait for her to make her own decision. When she makes the correct decision, I'm gonna reward her. And because dogs like to do what they get rewarded for, I'm hoping that she'll be able to uh, repeat this process. Um, And what I was mentioning before, um, the microphone was working, um, is that You can start off making this exercise very easy on your dog, and as they start to get better, you can start to make it rather challenging to really prove through things. So to start, I have several pieces of treats in my hand. I have one in this hand, I have four or five in this hand, and I'm gonna take this food, and I'm gonna purposely draw Hippie Shake's attention away from me. This is Hippie Shake, she's a five uh, year old toy poodle, uh, whopping six pounds. So I'm going to draw her attention away, and then I'm just gonna hold the food off of her nose a few inches and I'm going to wait for her to look away from the food and look back at me. Yes, good girl. So she looked forward at the food. She actually, she's a pretty smart little dog. She said, okay, you're not rewarding me for anything. So what if I lie down? When she laid down, I just ignored her. What I'm looking for her to do is to look away from the distraction and look back at me. So I'm gonna try it again. And I'm gonna start with the food on her nose. I'm gonna pull the food away. Oops. Here, babe. If she leaves position, I'm just going to move. Oh, yeah. So what she's trying to do is offer a bunch of behaviors. Just wait there for a second. Yes, good girl. Now, dog training 101, dogs learn within one second. So my marker command, the command that I use when my dog is correct, is the word yes. So when she does something correct, I'm going to say yes. Yes to my dog means that you're right and you're going to get a reward. So you'll notice that I'm waiting for her to look at me before I say yes and give her a treat. I'm going to try one more time here and see what she does. Nope. 
So she does something I don't want. I'm just going to start again. Oh, so now look what's happening, guys. Now she went, okay, yes, good girl. I'm starting to get the idea. So I'm holding the food out here. Yes, good. Yes, excellent. So now she's starting to pick up on what I want. I'm holding the food out. She's choosing to look at me. So the food that I'm using as a reward, you may notice that I'm bringing it to my face and then I'm rewarding her. What I wouldn't want to do is have her do such a great job of looking at me and then do this. Yes. And then feed her from my pocket. I need to reinforce that eye contact by making sure I feed her for looking at me. So I'm going to try it again. Yes. Good girl. Now I'm going to start making it much more challenging by putting the food very close to her face. I'm going to get some more treats ready here. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good. So you'll notice I'm having to be pretty specific with my timing because she's offering little tricks as we play. If I was to yes while her paw was going in the air, she would think we were doing wave or shake a paw. So I'm waiting until she's settled. Yes. And then I'm rewarding. Yes. So see, I have my hand within a couple inches of her face. Yes. Good girl. Now, if my dog's able to do that, I could do a bit of a more advanced version by having her hold a weight. And I'm going to put several pieces of food on the floor. And if she goes for them, I'm going to pick them up. Yes. If she looks at me instead of looking at the food. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yes, get it. Good girl. And then maybe if she looks at me, I can say yes and then tell her to get it from there. So again, the hard part, what people really want to do is they want to say, look at me, look at me, look at me, and they give the dog a bunch of commands. And you certainly could do that as a separate exercise once your dog knows that command really, really well. But what I love about this is that it causes the dog to problem solve. And you know what? Dogs really like that. They love using their brain. They like exercising problem solving techniques. But again, what's very important, <laughs> I need the bum is that we have good timing. I'm looking for her correct behavior. I'm guessing and rewarding when she's correct. When she's wrong, you'll notice I never scolded her. I never gave her any corrections. I just placed her back into position and I helped sort her through that particular exercise. But we love playing that game. We play it with food, with her food bowl. We play it with toys. And, and um, dogs, with the, they'll with, have a house lying on it in their bed. Yeah, so if you're doing this, uh, she's obviously a fully trained dog, but when you're first starting, you could put a leash on so that they can't run around, they can't steal the food, and uh, make sure you're in charge that way. But it's a great little game. Yes, good girl. For sure. Good. Okay. Come, coming on back. Um, yeah, we had a brief uh, uh, audio outage. I hadn't, I hadn't set up the um, other microphone yet, so... That was my oversight, but let's get into some of your questions. Um, I see Karen GSD, lover, who I know is a frequent uh, visitor here on the train station, says, I really need this for my dog. And that's one of the really great things about exercises like this is if you And you have... don't need any space to like, absolutely. you can literally just do it in your kitchen or your living room yeah. or whatever between commercials. Yeah. And we a couple talk... times a day. And... and those are the best times to do it. You know, if you always go out after dinner to do your attention training uh, or you always go out, um, whatever, before your dog training class, maybe and you're always doing attention training then but you don't do it any other time it, it's it definitely doesn't have that staying power as doing it at d various times uh all, all during the day i think what's really fun about that exercise is often you know when we teach it in our classes the f people are like a little bit overwhelmed with it at first but then once they try it a few times and then we go to revisit it the next week the dogs are so much better yeah. that it's very rewarding for the handler as well and i think that it's really cool to see your own dog start to put things together and start to purposely make good choices, it's very rewarding as a as a dog trainer and as an owner as well. So really play around with that. I think you'll find that uh, both you and the dog quite enjoy that exercise. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I see some really interesting distractions and we're, let's touch on some of these really quickly. Um, so take the long way home. Uh, says my greatest, which is not a Dixie Chick song. My greatest distraction <laughs> is most definitely my other dogs. Yeah. And one thing that you really need, we, we talk a little bit about this about uh, when we do our introducing your puppy to your other dogs video. I think that might be really helpful for you. And I don't know whether uh, we have Dan in the chat right now, but uh, if not, we can definitely uh, ch check it, that video out on our channel. It'll be helpful for you. But you do need to make sure because those other dogs are so valuable. From day one, they speak the same language. They know, you know how to communicate with one another. And 
those other dogs can seem really exciting and really interesting if you aren't there to sort of guide the process and, and teach your dog that uh, you are worth listening to more than they are. Um, so uh, take the long way home. Definitely check out that video on our channel. I see Mike and Judy Tippert, also frequent uh, visitors in the train station, kids playing and rabbits. Also food smells with Kona. So Kona's their one-year-old lab. Yeah, That's pretty good common. Name. Yeah. Ken and I just got married in Kona, Hawaii. We did. Last month. Yeah. Um, Miss Immortal says, luckily my pup is very food motivated, but uh, there are definitely things he likes the most. Yeah, if he's food motivated, you're going to find that that is a good, that I just yeah. showed you, that's a good exercise to do. For it can sure. be hard with the, with the really food motivated, motivated, I can't speak today, with the food motivated dogs at first because they're so enthralled with the food that's in front of them. So remember, you don't have to start with the food really close to the dog's nose like I was doing with Hippie. I initially started it with much further away and then you can progressively go closer as they get better. For sure. Charlotte and Coco. The SDIT, service dog and training, uh, great, greatest distraction is steak. Again, another food-motivated dog that's going to be really, really helpful for you. Um, Nicola Holmson says, my dog's, oops, missed it, uh, says, my dog's biggest distraction is other dogs and people in the distance. She just stands and stares and won't move until the thing comes closer. Uh, she switches off to her name and food. And we'll talk a little bit about maybe some redirection and how mm -hmm. you, and, and this is going to uh, really lend itself well to our conversation we'll have in just a couple of minutes about the timing. Because there's, you know, this sort of, um, if you imagine that there's kind of a force field around your dog and when someone's approaching that force field, you may not get the same, uh, once they enter that force field, you're not going to get the same attention as when they're approaching it. And we'll give you a couple of um, tips to you know get get and hey, maintain hey. get and maintain some of that attention, as well as how to deal with that point if your dog's just staring, just waiting for that. Uh, I think uh, we thing also need to talk a little bit about like follow through because I think sometimes yeah. when our dogs get stuck or frozen thinking about something, we just sort of sometimes. You know, that's not the time to wait your dog out. Like I was just talking about with that last exercise, I said, you know, wait your dog out until they choose. <laughs> Cool. There's going to be um, some times where you don't want to wait your dog out. You want to um, disengage them from whatever they're stuck on and redirect their attention away with, you know, guiding them with the leash or redirecting them with a distraction or um, whatever it might be. So just be aware of that. Yeah. Um, Adriana says she's a big time sniffer and picks up loads of things from the ground. So in general, the outside, especially scents and other dogs in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk, uh, we'll give you a couple tips specifically for your walking training. Uh, we'll also in a, just a couple of minutes, get into a leave it exercise and teach your dog how to leave it on command, which would be really helpful for mm -hmm. those situations. Now, I noticed Melinda Miller mentioned in here that when uh, when on leash, my dog licks her lips anytime we are approaching another dog or squirrel because she's so used to getting rewarded. Mm. And that's really, uh, it, that's a great indication that you're making good choices. You know, that it's you're- It's actually good that you would notice that too. For sure, yeah. You're, you, at some point you've acknowledged or she's acknowledged that uh, she's going to be rewarded by staying with you. So that licking of the lips, it's like that ring a bell and the dog will salivate exactly the same mm -hmm. process there so I want to talk just for a minute about some uh, attention exercises when we talk about but some simple things that are really easy to, to change in your training um, like reward position mm -hmm. and talk about the value of reward position when it comes to building focus on you yeah um, you know we have a lot of people say to us like why do your dogs just stare at you all the time like they don't look anywhere else and a lot of it is because they've had hundreds and hundreds of rewards for focusing on us but the um, direction and the location that we reward our dog is always very thought out it's very specific uh, and the main thing that we want to do when we're trying to build a lot of attention in any exercise that we're training is make sure that we're rewarding our dog with them still looking in our direction so if Ken was my dog and he was looking at me and I said yes and then I fed him and I lured his head away from me to get the reward I'm taking away all of that great focus. I need to make sure that if I'm looking for attention, I need to feed in a way that he's still pointing towards me, looking yeah. at me. So how you hold your hand, how you use your food is all really important. Um, if you're a type of person that trains and you have treats in your pockets or in bait pouches, that's great. But be mindful that when you're training that you don't have your hand hanging out in your bait pouch the whole time. That's a huge indicator that you're going to be feeding from your pouch. We would prefer you to take the food from your pouch to your face, to your dog, yeah. rather than going directly from the pocket to the dog's mouth. Again, if the dog always knows that the food's gonna come from up high, they're gonna look to where that, that reward is coming from. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, we, uh, oh, I just thought of something and now it's escaped me. Um, 
in, in terms so you of talk about feeding from our mouth. Uh, that is something that we do. Maybe you can mention that. Yeah, something that some people get really grossed out with is we'll actually put, well, they're not really dog treats, but they're like human food. Yeah, so like, I'll put like chicken wieners or chicken or cheese strings or something. I'll actually put them in my mouth and I'll bite a little piece off and then give it to the dog. And um, that way, like literally the food's coming from my mouth and not from my pocket. Um, but some people are really grossed out by that. I personally don't care. But some people look yeah. at it and go, oh, how could you do that? Yeah, but at, at home, I mean, you can probably immediately... My dogs will even catch it when I You'll immediately <laughs> notice or think about this dog sees all the value coming from your mouth, coming from your face. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll, you know, start to associate that with really good things. And, um, you know, the worst thing that we can do is uh, try to train our dog uh, with food always on their nose. You know, that's great at the very beginning, mm -hmm. but they are focused on the foods. I mean, for any skill, you really do need to um, get the uh, the rhythm of, you know, saying yes, for example, using that, uh, that, that marker word. Uh, maybe it's a clicker for you, whatever it is, using that thing and then presenting the food because otherwise you have a dog who's entirely focused on that treat in your hand what is dan referring to that's a mean left hook cal uh, oh when i was I think, doing this yes, yeah oh. probably <laughs> um i saw someone mention that their dog is really distracted by balls and that's a really common thing that's you know, because it's often associated with fetch and maybe uh karen you've actually used it to play fetch mm -hmm. but i'll tell you a really great way to um teach your dog to remain in position are those stationary exercises when there's balls around. So what I do is I'd take a tennis ball or something, some, maybe not the highest value. So if your dog thinks that tennis balls are the greatest thing on earth, then maybe you have another uh, sports ball or something in your house that's a little bit less enticing and you place it at, at a distance and then you work your stay or then you work your whatever station get in or some some stationary exercise and then you can start to move that ball a little bit closer and work those exercises again but things like uh balls and in, in uh, like fetch toys and things like that are surprisingly easy to discourage your dog from leaving you it's easy to teach your dog or to train your dog how to ignore those things because you have so much control of them um, so there is sort of that proactive, which we've started to talk about a little bit, and then that, that reactive um, kind of training. So if you can uh, identify and acknowledge something that your dog loves, then you know what you've got to do uh, to, to, to train through it. And it's so easy to set those situations up with the ball in the distance or even like get a, a friend or a family member to hold a tennis ball or toss a tennis ball while you're working on that stay. I think that a general dog training tip that we could give you that could be applicable to any any exercise you're working on really is that the best way to to have a well-trained dog is to try to predict future issues and train through it before you're actually in the moment where you have to use that particular skill on the fly so you know if your dog's distracted by balls or squirrels or whatever types you know whatever the situation is not that you're going to like bring a bunch of squirrels home and, and work on it but you know before you set out into the world where the distractions are going to be very very challenging you know we would advise you to work through teaching a leave it teaching a response to name you know but by, before i get to the point where i'm taking my dog on long walks or I'm taking them to really public places or I'm going to a park you know whether at a time when there's more people there my dogs have already learned a response to name they might not be perfect at it yet but they they have an idea of what it is they know what yes is they've heard it and worked through leave it commands and look at me exercises and little recalls and sits at the side so we've already yeah. proved through some of those things at home um you know on our own with nothing going nothing going on and then with some distractions in my own home um, adding distractions like purposely scattering toys around and putting little bits of food everywhere and, and proofing through that so that I have a more realistic prediction as to how my dog is going to react and then I've already tried and erred and failed and succeeded on a bunch of different options so I have an idea of what works for me and my dog before I all of a sudden get bombarded or surprised by a distraction when I'm out at the park or out for a walk so remember that dogs don't come trained that's actually our job we have to teach our dogs how to make good decisions and the easiest way to do that is to set our dogs up for some of these things and work through them one-on-one -on -one so our dogs know what to do yeah sort of to when you're looking to level up your attention or your focus um, in teaching your dog to leave distractions alone something that people wouldn't really uh think is of value is trick training mm -hmm. in it trick training the power of trick training is quite remarkable because it gives your dog the opportunity to choose it gives you an opportunity to reward your dog for doing something valuable for working with you um you know it, i can tell you two things that when you're done sure, yeah. that tricks have 
saved me on. Okay. Do, were you going to finish that? No, go I ahead. Just go ahead. Yep. You, sorry. Sorry. Um, so two things that I have found tricks to be extremely valuable are with, um, have been, I have a few dogs that, um, in the past that have been stressed with, um, either loud noises or new places, but we've spent a lot of time enjoying tricks together. And I've been able to use, you know, asking my dog for a few tricks in my vet office, for example. Yeah. Um, or we have a, a dog now, Funky Monkey, which I'll bring her out and actually show you some really cool tricks. She knows all kinds of really cool ones. Um, but she's now a little bit nervous of thunderstorms. And so one of the things that Ken and I will do with her is we'll get some treat out, treats out when the thunderstorm starts. We'll start doing a bit of trick training. And within minutes... Her whole demeanor has changed. Her ears are up and she's lively and, and she's excited because we're doing something that sort of takes her mind off what she's stressed about. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing, dealing with the same dog again, Funky. Again, she's 12 now and she's very well trained. But when she was younger, so she's half terrier, half border collie. So two very energetic breeds yeah. bl blended together. Right. I um, got her for sport for dog agility. Um, but when she was a puppy, my God, she was a wild child. She was a sweetheart. She was a very good dog, uh, but she was super energetic. And like, I couldn't, I, I was struggling with her focus and, you know, using her, her energy for, for good and not evil. So when she was younger, I started doing a lot of trick training and it really enhanced our relationship. It really enhanced her focus on me. Um, and I was able to, you know, get her doing some tricks and, and she would be focusing around distractions a little bit better because she really enjoyed it. It was very motivating for her. And she knows far more tricks than any of my other dogs, probably more tricks than all my dogs put together but it's because I, I utilized it when she was young to gain focus and to build a re working relationship between her and I for sure did you want to show tricks you yeah making... I can show a couple okay. tricks yeah, we'll if couple you want it'd sure. be kind of fun um I see there's been a couple of points uh in here that I wanted to talk about um Rhonda mentions uh, you know I think I'm expecting too much from my one-year-old boxer Chevy and I can tell you Rhonda that Keep those expectations high and, and don't, uh, you know, don't lower those expectations just because you're not getting the results you want. It just means you might need to take a step back to, to a, an easier uh, progress in your training. But at one year old, regardless of the breed, you should be getting, you know, a dog that listens reliably, Rhonda, a dog that, you know, can pay attention to you when you need it. But you do need to be consistent. You need to be a great leader for that dog. Okay. With no further ado... Hopefully we have things set up. Uh, one of my favorite parts, that light's on, and we're heading over no, to the I'm train station. The <laughs> Here, okay, so this is Funky Monkey. She is uh, going to be 12 this year, and she's one of my um, high competitive agility dogs. Uh, but when she was younger, actually throughout most of her life, I did a lot of trick training with her. So I'm going to show you a couple of the tricks she knows. So one of them is that she will tap her nose to my hand. So if I say tap, yes, tap, yes, tap, tap, yes, good girl. And I'll actually use that a lot for focus exercises. Hey, tap, yes, tap, get in, sit, tap, yes, tap. Up. Yes, good girl. So it just sort of gets her ready to, to work. Okay, she knows some of the normal things like uh, sit, shake a paw. Yes, good girl. High five. Yes, good girl. Can you wave? 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 Yes, good girl. And this is one of her favorites. Can you wipe? Quiet. Can you wipe your face? Wipe your face. Wipe your face. Yes, can you see that or is she not at a good angle? Yeah, here, I'll turn it this way. Wait. Wipe your face. Quiet. Wipe your face. Wipe your face. Wipe your face. Yes, good girl. Sit. Can you put them up? Quiet. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. Yes. Put them up. Yes, good girl. This is another one of her favorites. Can you bounce? Yes, bounce. Bounce. Yes, bounce. Yes, good girl. Can you go right? Quiet. So we've taught her her right and left. Right. Yes, right. You're cheating. Right. Right. Yes, left, yeah. left, yes. Am I doing it opposite? Doing opposite? Oh my God, poor Funky. Left, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, <laughs> oh my God. If I did it right, my poor dog would do it right too. Uh, here, get in, sit, through, through, through. Yes, good. <laughs> Tap. Tap, can you see me? 
back, 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 yes, you're good. Back, 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 yes, good girl. Okay, swing. Yay, good girl. Okay, finale, ready? Spider-Man, 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 yes, Spider-Man. Yes, Spider-Man, yes, good girl. It's much more impressive when she does it on a wall. Okay, quiet, good girl. Okay, good girl. And we are back in the uh, away from the train station. Now, imagine doing that with your dog, with them on line. Uh, every single time I want those dogs to be on a line or a leash, uh, like a long line or a leash. But imagine doing that, you know, in a relatively busy environment. Imagine how much you're not only uh, you've got your dog's attention because you're rewarding them well, but you're working on something with them. We use the term relationship pretty uh, loosely um, and it might be a little bit abstract if you're not totally sure what we're talking about but when we talk about relationship we're talking about a dog when you have a great relationship or even a working relationship with your dog that's the kind of dog that looks to you for information it's the kind of dog you know what their level of understanding is and you know how to help them through that you know you uh, have a dog who wants to go on walks and doesn't want to pull you know you can really deepen your relationship and strengthen your relationship by doing stuff like trick training imagine doing trick training at the park you know as somebody who's walking you know a few hundred yards it's a great way to get away. focus for sure it also allows your dog to look a little more um relaxed and more approachable as well especially too if you have like more of a bully type breed like boxers things like that bulldogs i know i had a friend of mine on facebook today um a few days ago say that he has this cute little french bulldog and you know people were walking past and like doing one of these because of the breed, but she's like a four month old, like cute little sweetie pie. Um, so he tries to do some tricks with her and like, you know, Great make idea. her look a little softer because she's really a very nice dog, but sort of just has a bit of a bad rap. Or maybe there's people that are nervous around dogs. And if they see them doing a cute little shake a paw or lying down and covering their face, it just makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. Like the dog's, you know, has good listening and that type of thing. So it sort of works all the way around. Also, you got to get that gram, those gram picks. Yeah. You need those. Um, Melinda Miller mentions, we did a million cross your paws at a vet a few weeks ago. It helped so much for Perfect. sure. And you know, what's interesting about that is that sometimes was one of our workshops. Yeah, absolutely. We did, uh, uh, attention exercises. Uh, we also did cross your paws as one of our mystery box workshops. And you may have seen on the lower thirds going by, if you are watching this on your computer, laptop, TV, whatever, if you take out your iPhone or your Android device and you scan that code, it'll take you to our free workshops. And you'll definitely want to check those out because we do those every single month and it, they can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. But talking about Melinda's point, you know, it's funny because if we're in the vet, sometimes, you know, as a dog owner, we're a little bit like, ooh, this is, you know, I'm a little bit stressed about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want, I know my dog's going to be worried. But it, for both of you, it can be such an advantageous thing to do. You know, com comforts them, they get to be rewarded. And it just turns that vet experience into a positive one. Yeah, and you can also do things like my puppies, as part of their agility training, when they're babies, I teach them, which we call perch work. So I have this like little box and I teach the puppy to get up and sit on it and do those types of things but what i quickly noticed is that when i would go to the vet for a visit uh the way scale that's there they would say you know can you get your puppy up on the way scale and i would just get a few treats out and say hop up and the puppy would go oh we're doing the box exercise right. and they literally will just jump right up on the way scale and sit and look at me and wait for their treat because we've practiced it as a little game and a little trick prior to that so you can turn all kinds of really useful you know everyday behaviors uh, with your dog into little tricks and little games to make it a more enjoyable experience for both you and your dog Mama Liana said, my almost 60-pound Old English sheepdog landed in my lap hearing funky. Oh. <laughs> that would be quite she's a surprise. Pretty, she's pretty stimulating. A lot of dogs yeah. have a hard time with her bark because she's so animated. Yeah, she is quite, Sorry. She has quite an intense bark for sure. <laughs> so now I know a lot of people might be struggling with... Um, Walking on leash. Mm -hmm. One of the most common things we hear is people, uh, you know, have trouble when they, maybe they have a dog who's starting to learn to walk on a loose leash and then all of a sudden someone's coming down the sidewalk and their dog can't, can't help themselves. Or uh, I think someone, I forget who it was, mentioned earlier, their dog loves to pick stuff up off the ground. Mm -hmm. That can be a real, it can be really dangerous for one, but that can be a real challenge. Oh, oh we have a super chat. Take the long I'm way home. I've been watching. Oh my Light, God. Lighten up the train station. Here <laughs> we go. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. Definitely Speak. get it too. Speak. Speak. 
Good girl. Speak. Thank you Yay. very much. Take the long Funky way home. Funky says thank you so much yeah. too. They say uh, take the long way home. Says thank you so much for all of your Good knowledge girl. and time. I'm binge enough. watching your channel. Well, that's very very so cool. Thank kind. you very very much. That's really nice. And now uh, now everybody's pumped. We're excited to get going. I, I missed is... the swimming corgi a little bit though. Uh, do you? <laughs> so I changed things up. See, I like to change the train station no, up that as one much was as good. I can. That, that was good. I created that one. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you need to yeah. use one of our dog's faces. I know, I know. It's maybe a little more challenging. <laughs> I hope you liked it at home, and uh, thanks yes. for watching. Thank us you so station. much. But thank you very much for the uh, the super chat for the donation. So let's talk a little bit about walking so on nice. leash. We know that you. All reliable skills are built on a sol solid foundation of success. So if you are in the middle of your walking training and you're still having your dog pull you down the street or you're still having your dog, you know, really struggle to know what position they need to be in, then you need to find success there before you take them out into a more challenging environment. Actually, I have an image. I think I still have this on here. The train one? Yeah, the train oh, one. Oh, perfect. Let's just see here. So we talk about... Um, the, f the five elements is teach, rehearse, add distractions, increase expectations, and new places. And when we talk about these things, so for example, teach would be introducing your dog to this new skill. Maybe it's walking on a leash. Rehearse might be, uh, you know, doing it over and over again. Adding distractions must come after you're having success. You've been able to rehearse it successfully. Mm -hmm. That's really um, important. It is because if you start to skip steps, you will definitely fail. And it's just not great for your dog's learning. You, you know, you want to be a great leader for your dog by helping them to be successful. You know, showing them if they're making a mistake, you're going to show them w w how to be right. But you're also going to try to not have to be always saying, no, don't do that. You got to be over yeah. here. I'll be close over here. So and I really think it's important to remember in saying that too, that what they learn first, they learn best. So right. if they're, if you, you know, our goal with the McCann method is to set the dog up so that they do the behavior successfully first, whether we lure them into position or show them with our hands or, yeah. you know, help them in any way to, so that they do it right. And then we repeat that over and over again so that they learn to first do it correctly. And then we make it a little bit more challenging. It's always best to build on success yeah. than it is to set them up to fail. Yeah. And when you're working with a dog who, hi, Melissa. who may, hi Melissa, welcome to the train station. Um, I, uh, I just love tooting. Um, <laughs> when you're working with a dog who may be getting distracted, finding distractions along the way, what's the first indi you know, I, I, this is going to be a little redundant because you guys are on about a 10 second delay, but, um, spell check doesn't like my name, Melissa. It's okay. The first thing <laughs> that you notice, the first indication that your dog is distracted and that they might leave you is going to be their eyes. They're going to look and like, you know, mark the that eyes thing. are the key to your dog's soul. Right. Yeah. It's also the key to you being successful with things like your leave it, you know, with things like uh, acknowledging your dog remaining in position and rewarding them for being there. I'd love to uh, jump into a leave it, teach, teach these guys a leave yep. it really quickly. And then we can talk just a little bit about the, uh, the timing of all of sure. this. That'd be perfect. Okay. I don't know if maybe you should let those guys outside. They're going to get pretty stimulated. Uh, Michelle Jones. Hello. I love your channel. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us here in the train station, Michelle. It's uh, nice to have you here. And it's nice to have all you guys here joining us. Uh, all, uh, I'm not sure how many people are watching right now, but we're excited to have you here. Um, in just a moment, Kale's going to show you the leave it. And it is such a powerful skill, uh, especially for walking on leash. But it also can be, uh, you know, if your dog is maybe in your living room and you don't want them to, you know, whatever, be sniffing something specifically or uh, digging maybe for a toy or something like that. The leave it is going to be so helpful to redirect your dog's attention if you do some of these exercises. Now, we do have a leave it, a full video on leave it on the channel. But um, I want to show you guys sort of the abbreviated version of this uh, of this exercise, oh and I love seeing Hippie Shake get out there and work. So this is going to be fun for me too. Yeah. Okay, let's take it on back to the train station. Okay, the, I'm going to make this very difficult on my dog. I just went and got a chicken bone. Can you see it? Yeah, it's up there. Oh, oh that's it? a pretty good one. She's going crazy. Yeah. Come here. Good girl. Okay. So what we're going to do is, oh, do you see how excited she is for this chicken bone? We're going to start with said chicken bone at a bit of a distance. So I'm just going to place it a little bit further away to begin with. And I'm just going to start off by placing my little dog into a sit at my side. Good girl. And I'm going to start off to see if she can just sit on a loose leash at my side without going towards the chicken bone. Good girl. Yes, it's a chicken foot, not a chicken bone. 
Yes, good girl. Now, when you begin this, and you've never done this before, the likelihood of your dog remaining in position is probably pretty small. So if they get up to go towards it, you're simply going to, okay, you're simply going to place them back into position, into a sitting position. Good girl. And then the goal is to put slack in the leash. If I hold her tight, she's not learning how to do this by herself. So the leash is loose. She has a choice to go if she'd like to. But of course, it's if, she, if she does, I'm not going to let her get away with it. I'm going to put her back. But my goal is to allow her to choose to sit here. So now we can just work a bit of a leave it at a distance. Now you'll notice Hippie's resorting back to that you decide game that we practiced earlier. Notice that she's looking at the chicken bone, then she's looking back. That's great. So I like to start that game earlier before I do anything like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I also have some pretty high value treats in my pocket and I'm going to move towards this particular distraction. But before she can get to it, I'm going to tell her leave it and to teach her what leave it means. And I expect her to look away from the, the distraction when she hears the word, but I'm not just gonna test her, I'm gonna show her. So I'm gonna say leave it within one second of, Missy, can you sit there for a sec? Uh, within one second of me saying the command, I'm gonna get my food down on her nose and I'm gonna draw her attention away from it. And when I see that she's more committed to me and my food and not on the chicken, I'm going to yes, then reward my dog. So I'm gonna just motion towards, I'm gonna tighten my leash up though so she can't snatch it without me being ready. My food's ready in this hand. Okay, good, okay. Leave it. Yes, good girl, excellent. Good girl, okay, okay. Good girl, you're too smart, Missy Moo. Wait, what's that? What's this thing? Leave it. Yes, good girl. So I'm saying leave it and then I'm drawing her attention away. Okay, so she can do that. Now I'm going to test her. I'm going to move towards it. I'm going to say leave it. Where are you going? Sit. I'm going to say leave it, but I'm not going to give her a treat. Missy, can you sit, please? Wait. Uh, I'm just going to ask her to leave it, and I'm going to see what she does. Okay. Okay. Leave it. Good girl. Okay. Leave it. Yes. Good girl. Leave it. Yes. Good girl. She said, Mom, I'm going to take the long way around. Yes. Good girl, well done. That's a great opportunity to talk about how you built so much value for, for being a, moving away and turning away from that, from that object that she just chose to do that. Yeah, and again, stop. So do you see how she keeps trying to go behind me? Actually, what she's trying to do now is because she knows that she's not uh, allowed to get the reward, she's actually trying to move herself further away. She's trying to be right, but I'm just going to place her here because I want her to realize that, yes, I don't want her to take it, but I also want her to feel comfortable that she can sit near that distraction and everything will be fine. Good girl. But yes, we've played this game many times before and she's had a lot of value. Yes, my love, that's a good girl. She's had a lot of value for moving towards me with some very high reward, uh, value rewards that I I've had um, so she's learned very quickly that that's not as exciting as what's gonna happen when she moves towards me that's a very very good girl now when you begin I tried to make it as hard as I could so that I could maybe make her make a few mistakes but when I begin I sometimes will take a old Tupperware container I'll put treats inside I'll put the lid on and then I'll poke a bunch of air holes on the top of the of the oh, you having a sneezing attack come here sit good girl wait um, I poke a bunch of hair, air holes on the top, sit and wait, good girl. And that allows the scent to come out, but she can't steal any food. Missy, sit your little curly bum down. Yes, good girl. Okay, do you want me to do anything else? No, I think that's good. Okay, okay miss, that was good. Yes. Excellent. We'll head back over see some questions coming in to the train station. <laughs> okay. Um, I always... I always enjoy, like, especially if we can use Hippie for some of these exercises. She's smaller, so it's easier, especially in the smaller um, uh, area in the space that we've got. But uh, she can also, you know, she could make mistakes in these situations. And Kale tried really hard. What you might need to do is if you have a dog who is distracted by whatever the thing, let's say it's people, you might work first. Maybe at first you use a tennis ball. And then maybe the second thing you work on this exercise with, it's some food. Uh, and then maybe you can introduce like a familiar family member and work through it. But um, by by increasing those uh, success uh, challenges, by 
increasing the challenge, you can increase your success with your dog. Now, if you were to go out and try doing leave it uh, around people the very first time out practicing this, it's probably going to be pretty tough. The other thing you can do is, I mean, we don't have a lot of space to show you here, but if we were working it with a little puppy, we would probably put that food bowl in one corner of the frame over here. And then Kale would be have the puppy over here. Like over we have um, some tutorial videos on how to teach Leave It on our YouTube channel, though, where you can actually see it a little bit better than yeah, what I showed you today. It's a pretty thorough example of the, uh, teach, I think it might be called Teach Your Dog to Leave It. Uh, and so that could be really helpful. I saw a couple of interesting things. I wanted to say, Philip B., this is exciting. Got an ultrasound confirmation today that my Bernadoodle puppy is definitely on the way. Can't wait to put into practice all that I've learned from this channel. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's pretty exciting. Bernadoodles are all the rage right now. Yeah. Yeah. They're really pop quite, quite popular yeah. in classes. Dottie Kirkland asks an important question. It's what color is best to teach a five pound puppy to heal properly without risking hurting their neck? And I've had a couple of questions on the channel about this recently, mm -hmm. uh, about the appropriate equipment for your dog. And do you want to start us off? Um, well, I have um, a six pound dog and I trained her on just a regular flat buckle collar. Um, I did a lot of training and focus before I did a lot of walking and heel. Um, when you say puppy, I don't know what age you're referring to, but I know because when Hippie was a puppy, she was like what three pounds or you know something like that yeah. she's really little yeah um i didn't do a lot of big walks with her just because the world's pretty big out there when you're that small so i would take her to different places to socialize her but i was just a little bit more careful about walks um and I just trained her on a regular f flat buckle collar. Uh, I actually used a cat collar for the first little bit because her tiny little neck was so small that um, dog collars didn't really fit. Um, some people out there may suggest using a harness. And for dogs that are really small, harnesses can be okay. But as a dog gets bigger than, say, 10 pounds, we do not recommend you use a harness for training because then the leash attaches to the back uh, of the dog their literal back and you can't turn and maneuver and have good timing um you need the leash to attach to their neck so you can turn their head and help them to be successful um, but little tiny tiny dogs sometimes a harness is okay because their whole body is so little when you move the body you move you move the head at the same time yeah but a couple of over things. 10 pounds not a good idea yeah I, to be honest i mean hopefully you're always working on a six foot leash um and regardless of the dog's size at six feet you know you're going to start slowing them down at two three uh it's hard for them to reach out and hit the end of that leash um, so that's something to keep in mind. We talked about harnesses. Kale talked about harnesses a little bit. And something that we've learned is that harnesses, if the dog is pulling and walking and pulling and walking, is that the harness actually changes the dog's gait. Yeah, how it's not they, very good for their How bodies. they step. Yeah, so you've got to be really careful about the amount of time that your dog is in a harness, especially if you're uh, trying to teach them to walk on leash. We... We always recommend starting at like a flat buckle collar level because it gives you so much control of their neck and head. It um, really allows... Can you get a collar? Yeah, like sure. It really allows them to feel the tension, the pressure. We always want that uh, clip of the leash hanging down because at that point, it's so easy to transition to uh, leash dragging and ultimately off leash. But something like a flat buckle collar will allow your dog to really know that whether they're putting pressure on the leash or not. Yeah, so this is Hippie Shake's collar. I just took it off or it's a bit grungy, sorry. It's just a, a le little leather rolled collar. Um, she's the only dog that has this, pink of course. Uh, and it has a buckle to attach it, as you can see. We really like buckle collars for our dogs rather than snaps because once it's done up, it's not going to come undone. Snaps can break or they can snap open accidentally. Um, so that's why we say flat buckle collar. We just find that this is a little bit more reliable. Yeah. And then we can put the dog's identification. Actually, literally, her little tag that said her name and number fell off yesterday. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> So I have cute. to go get another one. Um, but yeah, she wears this all of the time. Um, so that uh, she always has uh, her information on her and um, I have a way of getting control should I need to. Yeah, I just want to say hello to Daryl and Luna. <laughs> he says he's really busy right now, but we know. Uh, thanks for jumping in, just stopping in in the train station. Um, whoa, what was I going to say? We're talking about harnesses, changing the dog's gait. Uh, oh, there are a couple of questions I think that came in that I wanted to chat about. So Colton Roballo asks a uh, at the dog park anywhere around other dogs, she will chop at other dogs when they get near me. It's the only time she shows signs of aggression or ill intent. She doesn't do that with my girlfriend though. So it's hard. We get, we get a lot of questions about um, uh, biting and aggressive behavior. And I'll tell you, Colton, uh, that 
through YouTube is not the best place to get information about a behavioral issue. Uh, your best, uh, uh, my best advice for you is to seek out like a local behaviorist that can give you some, uh, give you some tips, get you started uh, fixing this problem. But it's hard for me to know, you know, what what the trigger what is, the cause is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What the level of aggression is? Is it fear aggression? How bad is you, it? Right. There are so many factors. I wish I could help you out more. But... We can tell you this though. Um, that behavior isn't acceptable, and it shouldn't be happening. So. In the meantime, if you don't know how to properly correct the behavior, which is what we're suggesting you go to behaviors for so yeah. that they can really give you the proper advice. But for now, you need to avoid those situations from happening. So yeah. if this is happening at the dog park, um, then you need to stop doing that. Because right. uh, again, if your dog's rehearsing this, you know, if a dog snaps at another dog aggressively for whatever intention it might be, and it backs other dogs off, they go, huh. That worked, mm -hmm. and now your problem starts to get worse. So you need to stop that right now from happening, um, and then in the meantime, go and seek out somebody to help you so they can assess the dog situation. It's one thing if we can see the dog, you know, with our own two eyes and assess. But as Ken said over the internet, we would not want to give you the wrong information because yeah. every situation deserves a slightly different uh, piece of advice. Totally, yeah. And I just I, I saw that uh, Colton had mentioned he, he goes to areas that are mostly dog free, and that's to your advantage. The do the dog party park he goes to has three separate fenced areas oh, okay. and it, it, just be aware of when people are coming in uh i might say you know he's not friendly uh, don't you, mm, whatever yeah. and then you can you can leave sticky situation yeah I think. yeah it's a tough spot um another question did i see in here uh charlotte and coco ask do you recommend a head halter gentle leader halty or whatever the brand do you want to take this one yeah we, we do recommend head halters um or head um collars we call them um we really like them it takes a lot of impact off of the dog's neck but we only recommend the gentle leader um we do not recommend the halty or any of the other brands out there our experience uh, with the gentle leader has uh, is the best one um it's easy to use it's comfortable for the dog it works very well it works on the premise of pressure rather than the premise premise of pain like some other uh, training callers out there yeah um, and what's really nice about it is that you can wean off of it which some other head halters it's a little bit more challenging to do that right um, so there's a bit of a process that we do in order to, to do that but we love the gentle leader product yeah and so Mary Williams says I went to a new training place with Bodhi on a gentle leader and they said it could hurt his neck and they don't like him they strongly advise advised a prong collar. Oh gosh. <laughs> now this is something we uh, we um, really encourage you to not use a prong collar for a couple of reasons. We know that you can get the same kind of success uh, with uh, something that isn't a using pain as the stimulus. The prong to, collar to... is going to hurt your dog's neck a lot more than it generally yeah, does. Yeah, <laughs> but I think what some people think is that you are using maybe the prong collar for like for like long, it was raining. for like long line things, you know, for uh, you, you'll never have the nose loop over your uh, dog's nose with the collar clipped to it uh, on anything over six feet. So you don't have an opportunity to hurt the dog's neck. You aren't allowing them to pull on the leash. You aren't, you know, uh, cranking them around with it. But the prong collar, I mean, number one, it's really hard to um, wean off of it because your dog is becoming dependent on those pressures and those those pinches and pokes. Um, where the gentle leader, you can slippery, simply slip the nose loop off of your dog's nose and clip it to the flat buckle collar. Um, you need to keep in mind that with any collar that you use, there is a correct and incorrect way to sure, use it. Yeah. So it is important that if you're going to be using even a regular collar, there are certain techniques and and um, timing and all these things that you need to learn through dog training, whether it's from us or our online training or wh whoever you're getting your training from. Yeah. There's specific techniques that you need to know because... Um, you know there's a right and wrong way to do it so you know our experience with using the gentle leader of course we teach proper techniques is the dogs have been you know doing a great job on them we recommend them for young dogs as well because they you know takes all that uh impact off their trachea um but we're not advocates of the prong collar in any way shape or form and, and keep in mind we have uh we uh we've trained over eighty thousand dogs ninety thousand ninety thousand dogs, dogs. Yeah. yeah so we have we, a lot of experience yeah we've been helping more than 500 dogs a week for several many many years and uh we there was a time when we were using prong collars that was just the the, the the tool to use and it seemed to make sense but over time we learned that something like the gentle leader if you need that kind of control i mean flat buckle collar is what you're working towards mm -hmm. right that's the thing that you ultimately want to use to train um but it's the the uh, we actually didn't really use prong collars we used chain collars right cha right yeah they're very collars. different yeah yeah that's a good point mm -hmm. um but uh 
you know, moving towards that flat buckle collar, the gentle leader is such a, s a simple progression to slip mm -hmm. the nose loop off and clip it to the uh, flat buckle collar of your dog. Let's talk for just a moment about uh, the before, during, and after when it comes to a mm. uh, getting Sandy, some distraction. Sandy's comment she just made is absolutely brilliant. Let's see it here. So Shandy Blake says, I see dogs on prong collars dragging people down the street. Tools are great, but there's no substitute for teaching loose leash walking. Uh, so your dog understands how to walk on leash. Yay. Yeah, and that's really, that's really, really important. I, I think that's really the uh, stance that certainly that we take. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the stance that everyone should really understand. Yeah, dogs aren't robots. They no. need training and they need advice and they need guidance. And that's what we need to do. And our goal is to try to do that in the least ad um, adversive way possible. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the before, during, and after when it comes to distractions. Now, okay. when you are approaching something that your dog finds distracting, and let's say, let's just give you a very specific example, walking on a loose leash, um, you need to uh, identify the moment that your dog starts to get distracted. Maybe you see the person, maybe your dog sees the person or the other dog. At that moment, you, you start using something like your leave it. You could even start rewarding your dog, getting some attention. But the last thing you want to do is be feeding, 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 feeding until you run into that thing that your dog finds really distracting. So sort of envision this like circle around your dog that you can start rewarding them when they reach that threshold, that point when they might start to think about leaving. That's going to be really, really powerful. Um, as well as what you're going to do during. So if we're walking in straight lines towards that other distraction, try to get some distance, try to get some lateral distance away from that distraction so that your dog's way more likely to be successful. You don't want to, um, all the food in the world may not be helpful if you're too close to that dog. Is there anything you want to add to that? No. Nope. No. Nope. What's so funny? I'm, uh, well, A, I'm not really listening to you because I'm assuming <laughs> oh, that what yeah. you say is probably spot on, but I'm just watching the chat and seeing that Shandy is giving me a reminder because I was supposed to do something for her a few days ago and I haven't done it yet. I will do it right after the stream is over, I promise. <laughs> Now the after, sometimes when you get a great response from your dog, let's say you've been working hard to um, teach your dog to leave something alone. The moment they make that decision, the moment they check back in with you, you can really make that exciting. Now for a stationary skill, you're not gonna jackpot reward your, I mean, you're not gonna be at like an enthusiastic uh, bubbly, you're gonna go in and you might jackpot reward them with food. But if you're walking by something on the street, you're walking by another dog, another person, and your dog is often leaving you for that, but this time, because of your planning and because of your before and during, you're successful, that after better be a lot of fun. You mm -hmm. better make it rewarding for your dog. And because genuine. that's a tough choice. And genuine, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So it's so powerful. Really keep in mind those moments that, that as you're leading up to the distraction, while you pass the distraction, and you know, if you're trying to teach walking on a loose leash, don't default into a sit. You might get a stronger sit out of the deal, but you really want to teach your dog to make great choices to walk on a loose mm -hmm. leash. And then the after is that acknowledge the success. And if they don't get it right, you, can, you have your leash. You have your leash in your hand. You can guide them away. You can really show them, you know, the position that they're supposed to be in, which mm -hmm. is such a such a helpful thing. And we want you to get out and, uh, you know, as you build on these successes, be able to do stuff like go to the park and have a distraction in the distance mm -hmm. because you've got your leash or you've got your long line on and you're able to challenge your dog just a little bit. And don't underestimate the uh, value of a high high value rewards. I think sometimes what happens, that happened to me this week in, in one of my training classes, My one of my students was trying to work on a recall with his dog and this dog was just very, very distracted and um, couldn't really focus and was looking everywhere but him. And literally all I did was give him a little bit of a higher value treat and the dog like, we couldn't get enough of him because now he had something better that what was going on in the room. Yeah. So don't be stingy with your treats, guys. Absolutely. Make sure you use really high value rewards. Make it worth your while for your dog to make good choices um, to be with you and to focus on you. But if you don't have something that's that's high value enough, and we can certainly give you recommendations, um, you're making your your life a little harder than than it needs to be. Um, Joanne Greco said, uh, asked about the gentle leader. I see uh, Dan, the moderator man, dropped our gentle leader playlist, and that is going to be uh, quite an extensive uh, cover of how to use a gentle leader and how to get your dog accustomed to the gentle leader, how to fit it, as well as how to wean off of it. So that's going to be a really helpful playlist for you. Now, we've arrived at the point of the live stream where uh, I see people are saying, we the North, go Raptors. It's almost game time. Mm -hmm. It's almost game time. 
But I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we publish new videos every single week to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. Now, I need to say a big thank you to our super chatter, uh, take the long way home. Uh, yes. Very amusing, uh, very amusing YouTube handle. But thank you very much for the super chat. We also need to thank our mo amazing moderator man, Dan Luton, for uh, lighting things up in the chat, taking care of our thank stream. You, Dan. We do appreciate it, Dan. And on that note, I want to wish you guys well. I'm Ken. I'm Cal. Happy training. Bye for now. See you next week, guys.